Okay, so today's session will be a bit about debugging. Uh, unfortunately, the session is not yet published on the website, so uh, you have in the thread Razvan sent a link to this uh, file. The whole session is here, so you don't need to worry about it. It's just not on the website, but you can see it fine here. Everything works, the links and everything, so it's fine. Okay, so up until today, we've learned how to use unique kernels. The last session, we saw how uh, you can uh, start a unique kernel, let's say, manually with using uh, make and chemo and other stuff. Today, we will uh, uh, look a bit on, on how to debug a unique kernel. Because a unique kernel is a basically works as a virtual machine and also has uh, the user space and the kernel space code into the same other space you might think that it's hard to debug it because again it's a uh, virtual machine you can just i don't know run run a debugger or something like this but it's actually not that hard because it's very easy for you to debug kernel code uh, from inside the application you can attach G gdb and stuff like that if you use chemo like we did in the last session and you will see today how to do that and overall uh, you can very easily debug kernel code many times when you port an application as you saw i think in the third session you create a docker file you do everything you port an application you see that sometimes it doesn't work sometimes you don't know why it doesn't work the first thing you need to do when you do that uh, usually you uh, you go on the manual build. So here I have the setup that you did in the last session. Is the Hello World application? Let me do this and this. So is the Hello World application? We have the config file here, and we just use the same setup we did last time when you run menu config and select everything. If the ap the application that you created doesn't work. Then the first thing you need to do is uh, every time enable debug messages. So this is the simplest form of debugging. We have a library that's called UK Debug. Here under library configuration, you go on UK Debug, and here you can uh, enable many things like the message level you can say okay i just want to see the critical and error messages or i want to see every message you can enable debug messages globally we'll talk about that in a bit you can even i don't know color the output and print some extra stuff here and then if you save this uh, let me make sure something yeah we're fine Another thing we want to do is build without optim optimizations. So under build options here, you have the optimization level. Usually, usually it's optimized for performance. We want to cancel this, so we don't want to optimize anything. Just uh, compile as it is. And then if we save this and we build our image, Then we will run the image again using the same uh, commands we used in the last session. So if you go here, uh, the run command where was this one? Is it exactly the same command? So we just take that and paste it here, and we will see some debug messages. But it takes a bit to compile. Okay, and now we run this, and you can see a lot of messages, some info messages, so just debugging stuff, some warnings. This one said that, okay, you have a, a networking support enabled, but there is no network interface attached, so the network won't work even if you have it enabled. We, we can ignore that because we're just running a hello world, we won't need net networking. Let's see what other stuff is here. It shows us the memory map, 
not necessarily that relevant for us right now. There is no error, there is no critical uh, messages, so we, we are okay. We can go even up a notch and enable some more messages. And these probably are the most useful ones for you. Under syscall shim, we have a tab that's called debugging and we have something that's called s trace uh, like messages. If you don't know what s trace is, if we have an application, let's uh, let's create a short application here. That just prints hello world. Then we compile this there is this tool called s trace that if we run this it will show us every single system call that our application does you can see that there are some system calls done by the uh, the shell you can see the right system call here that prints hello world you can see other system calls like I don't know, get random, whatever, some memory allocated. This is what the application does before printing Hello World. And if you have a more complex application, so obviously you'll have a lot of syscalls here. In Unicraft, this is a, a quite relevant point of, point of failure. So if something fails, if you enable messages like this and you see every system call that is done, you'll be able to see uh, some errors here. How do you do this again? Under library configuration, there is the syscall shim layer and debugging and just uh, enable S trace messages. If we build again, let's, build, let's give it a bit more course. So everything we build again and then we run it. Again, nothing changes when we run the application. So we use the same command, it just it will show us more messages. Okay, and now we run again, and we can see some messages also almost identical to the ones we got when we ran S trace here. Okay, so you, for example, you can see the get random, BRK, and then write the same ones as here. You can see that, for example, we have an F stat here. We don't have it here, so. This one is a bit different, but uh, that's not that relevant. You can just take a look at the messages here and see what's going on with the application. What errors do you mo most likely get? So assume your application doesn't work. You might get errors like this. If the application tries to open some file. So this is what the open uh, system call does and it doesn't find it, you uh, get an error like this, no such file or directory. What this means usually is that there is some requirements for the application that you were not able to find when you build a Docker file. So if you remember when we built that Docker file, uh, I think here, in the third session, we end up with a Docker file that looks something like this and we took some uh, requirements from here you asked ask me uh, in that session how do we get all the requirements and i told you well, some of them you can get using ldd some of them you will not find using ldd because the application loads them dynamically at runtime what we do about those well you can copy the ones you know are there so you use ldd you copy the ones you see then you run this, so you enable S trace messages, you run this, and then before the application fails, you see uh, what files it tried to open. So if our application, for example, crashed here, so this didn't exist, it just crashed here, you can look above and see, okay, try to open this file, 
we tried to open a libc and it didn't find it so that's why we can assume that's why it crashed sometimes there are files like uh, like files under proc for example maybe it needs something here uh, or something under uh, etc again configuration files and everything else you will find them if you run these uh, asterisk like messages sometimes you can not find the file but still work like uh, well here these are applications so eventually it finds this it, it finds it but if uh, it tries to open a file it doesn't find that file but still works and most likely it's not a requirement it's not a required file it's just has to do with some extra functionality that you don't really care about you can add that file if you want to but you can also leave it up but if it fails and you see that right before it fails it tries to open some uh, uh, some file and it doesn't find it then you know what to do this is why this s trace is uh, is very important another problem might be that uh, unicraft has some uh, system calls not implemented for example the robust list you can see function not implemented this one too. many applications have fallbacks so if this one is not implemented it doesn't mean that the application won't work so the application still works but sometimes uh, some applications might require certain syscalls that we do not have implemented this is again another easy way to see it you look at it you see that it gives an error you see if it crashes right after the error and then you know uh, you know what's wrong and if uh, the system call is not there you can even implement it yourself and you should fix uh, it should fix the problem i'm gonna spend maybe one two minutes here for uh, for everyone to take a deeper look and see if there are any questions Okay, if there are no questions here, then we can look at another kind of debug messages. Again, under UK debug here, there are global debug messages. So you do this, and this enables all existing uh, debug messages across all libraries, all uh, build sources, and everything. So this basically enables everything. This will show a lot, a lot of uh, messages. So if we just build this again. It shows a lot of messages and it will be hard to go through all of them. But also if uh, if you don't you don't find anything useful in the more minimal uh, debug messages, then you can use this one and you can make sure that everything is there. Okay, so it should be done compiling. And now if you run again, you can see that there are a lot of them. So it just keeps printing and printing and printing and so on. And now you can again go through them, see if there is anything interesting. A lot of them will not be interesting. For example, you have all these ones from the a single syscall, the get time syscall. You can just skip through them. You will most likely skip through almost all of them. Uh, but again, this is a last resort, so if S trace doesn't work, if normal debug messages don't work, then you can do this. You can enable everything and see if you can find something useful there. Another thing you can do, and this is a bit uh, more advanced, this is actual debugging, not with uh, just debug messages, is attach a GTB instance. So you can open, you can run the application. Let's use the same command. Actually, this is broken, so let's do this. Okay. If you run this and then you add some uh, some options, some extra options, this minus S, uh, capital S, this will start the machine paused. So if you do this, 
now it started but it, it won't do anything because it's paused it's waiting for you to do continue and now you will run so this x uh, this extra uh, minus s starts the machine pause and we add another uh, lowercase s this will open up a gdb server if we look into the chemo min menu, so manual, so we do this chemo system x86 and we search for minus s. You can see that the shorthand for GDB, TCP and the port number, it will open a GDB server on this port, port 1234. Then we can connect to this port using GDB, using a remote connection and we can debug it just like we would debug a simple application. So let's do this. Let's open another terminal here. Actually I have this open already. So. so again, we started this with the usual command we use and these two extra options and then to attach to it we have to use the uh, build uh, flow document so this is the image that we ran this is this one here we can use this but this is stripped so if we look at this it's stripped uh, it won't show any kind of symbols or functions and variables and anything like that it, it won't help us there is also uh, another image called it's the same name but it has a dot uh, dvg at the end this is not strip if we look at both of them let's do this let me zoom and let's also do this you can see that the kernel that we run has three megabytes. It's stripped, that's why uh, it's small. And the other one that is not stripped has 7.5 megabytes, so it's more than double. We will al always run this. We cannot run this one. If you try to do this, you will show an error. You will always run this image, but you can debug using this image. How do you do this? GDB and then you want to give it a startup command you say target remote on this port that's again the port we have from Kimu and then we give it the file the file is this debugging uh, image we have this so I have hold on let me comment this and run again okay So now we connect it to the uh, virtual machine, basically to our unikernel. You can see that it tells us well in which function we are. We can run backtrace. It shows us uh, the usual backtrace. We can break. When we break, we need uh, instead of the usual break, we need to use hardware breakpoints. Let's say we want to break into the main function. We stopped into the main function of the error loader. Then we can continue, and we get uh, we get there. It will take a while because I have everything printed here. Yeah, maybe I should stop the debug messages first. But anyway, uh, you can basically do anything you would usually do when running GDP. Let me just quit stop this one too and attach again to show you a bit more and let's break here so you, you can break at the function name let's go there okay again backtrace everything works as expected you can see the registers 
like you would do again with a usual program. You can see the code. Yeah, so you can see where in the Unicraft core you are or the application or whatever. Uh, you can see basically everything. You can do everything and set registers to certain values. You can call functions, you can do anything you want. Now, if you want to uh, debug the application itself, so you want to step into the application, the application will be loaded at a later time. You probably see that. Uh, let's run this again. And let's... Let's disable some debug messages because there are too many of them. So we go in here and we disable this and we also disable the syscall shim as trace messages. And now we should be fine. There are some very detailed uh, debugging instruction here in the Airflowder uh, repository where you can see how you can debug also stuff like external libraries, your application code and so on. So you have here a way to debug uh, also the, the application that you are adding that. Let's see, let's run this. This will tell us where the application is loaded to, so it gives us an entry point. And then you can do, again, this is uh, here in the Airflowder application. You can run it again, connect GDB. And then use this command. This is something that you most likely will almost never need. So, in case you get to this point, this might uh, get pretty confusing. In case you get to the point where you want to debug the actual application that runs inside your uh, uh, inside your Unicraft, so for example, you want to debug this, the actual applications on libraries then uh, you have detailed instructions on how to do this in the Airflowder repository but most likely you won't get there so if you need to debug something using GDB it's, it's most likely going to be something related to Unicraft but again you won't even get there most likely you will get to uh, the end of your issue just by enabling debug messages and S trace messages and just look through them and see what fits in case sometimes you need uh, more complex debugging, uh, we can we can see then when it happens what you have to do. Any questions so far? So again, the very basic lines. The first thing you do when your application breaks enable some simple debug messages see if you catch anything from there if not then in enable some more uh, aggressive let's say debug messages like the s trace one or even the global uh, uh, globally enabling ones and most of the time like 99 percent of the time you will find the answer there if that doesn't work then you can attach gdb to it and see what actually happens but it's very rare that you will end up in this point. And again, most issues will be with missing files, something like this. Files that are, for example, here, you can see that the local time is needed. In case this is what happens, then you can just uh, 
copy that in your docker file so again you just change the docker file and add whatever you want and whatever is needed extra there sometimes it will be a function not implemented error here that if the function is really needed you can implement it in the unicraft core but again it's very rare that it happens uh, most of the times it's just a missing file okay so if there are no more questions you can uh, go through the session and if anything pops up just uh, 